Comic-Con 2020 at home. Uh, today, we're going to talk about transforming together time, family gaming, and the future of play. Video games have been an influential part of culture, creativity, connection for decades. From numerous console wars to memorable mobile, mobile gaming moments, uh, gamifying the world in augmented reality, or jumping into immersive worlds with VR, uh, voice, and beyond. The global gaming market is booming and the family gaming market is getting even bigger. So today, join uh, myself, Valerie Vacante. I'm uh, with Live Area and Collabsco, along with Tommy Palm with Resolution Games and Tommy Tallarico. So guys, do you wanna kind of have a quick introduction and ch share with everybody what you're up to and what you're working on? Sure. Hi, this is uh, Tommy Palm. I'm calling in from Sweden. I'm uh, one of the co-founders and CEO of uh, Resolution Games, uh, VR video game developer in uh, in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, and we've been around for about five years and, and uh, developing about ten titles for primarily virtual reality. Great and. Tommy. Yeah, I'm uh, Tommy Tellerico. I've been in the game industry for about 32 years. Um, I own the Guinness Book of World's Record for the person who works on the most video games in their lifetime. My mother's very proud. And uh, I've been involved uh, everything, some of the titles that you may know, um, everything from the early Madden football games, Earthworm Jim, Disney's Aladdin, uh, the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater, uh, Guitar Hero, uh, Metroid Prime. Uh, I was the first American hired uh, on the Sonic the Hedgehog team. And yeah, after that, I was on a, a produced and co hosted a television show for 12 years about video games, Electric Playground, which started in the mid 90s. And then in 2002, I created the uh, worldwide touring sensation Video Games Live which uh, has been touring around the world now for uh, 19 years uh, and, and breaking Guinness World Records as well for, for traveling symphony shows. And uh, three years ago, I, I took over as CEO of Intellivision and we're creating a brand new family-based home console system called Amico. Great, thank you guys for joining. And uh, for a little bit of context uh, about myself, as I mentioned, I'm with uh, Live Area, uh, where I'm the director of strategy of a global commerce organization. A lot of what I do is uncover cultural trends, kind of what's new and next, what's happening with emerging tech and creating just all kinds of new uh, innovations. Uh, outside of that, I'm the founder of Collabsco, where a lot of my work is really about strategy, innovation, connected play, uh, everything from um, connected fitness and gaming to handheld gaming to <laughs> board games, voice, uh, you name it. If it's emerging tech, connected play or gaming, um, I'm probably making it, have made it, or in the process of creating it. So I'm honored to be here um, with these two sort of titans of the industry, both Tommy Palm and Tommy Tallarico. So thanks again, guys, for joining. A double Tommy. Yeah, I know. I feel left <laughs> out. I need to change my name. Um, <laughs> so cool. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, we've all kind of seen this big number here. You know, we know the industry's obviously growing, um, you know, 196 billion, you know, in just less than two years time uh, ahead. And then you know, I wanted to take a moment. I know, you know, you guys are obviously, you know, innovators in your space uh, and really just to let the audience here see how insane this uh, industry is growing and everything you guys are working on. Uh, Tommy Tallarico, I know this 3 billion gamers numbers and uh, a number you talk about a lot. Do you want to share uh, Anything with the group here? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When people think of the video game industry, a lot of times they, they're thinking of either like the home game consoles like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, uh, or, you know, the, the PC gamers, the big games, your World of Warcrafts, League of Legends, Dotas, and, and things like that. But the reality is, is that over the last, uh, say, eight years, 
uh, mobile, which let's put those in a grouping and say, call those hyper casual games for the, for the most part, you know, the majority being hyper casual again, for maybe people who don't consider themselves to be a gamer or non gamer, uh, as, as, as you would say, um, you know, the reality is, is that that dominates the entire industry, right? So um, it is completely taken over. It, it gains about 2% every year on those other uh, two categories, PC and home consoles. So, um, and almost tripling PC games in, in regards to, uh, you know, the money that brings in. But, but when you talk about the sheer numbers of people playing, yeah, there's about 200 million hardcore gamers in the world. That's if you include PlayStation, my, you know, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Switch, and, and say the PC, hardcore PC gamers. It's about 200 million people, which is amazing. But as you mentioned, you know, right now there's about 2.5 billion people playing mobile uh, and another, you know, a few hundred million playing casual games just on their PC, things like solitaire and things like that. So, so that's, that's one thing that people are always, you know, kind of greatly surprised to see how the industry has changed over the last decade where hyper casual, or let's just say games for everybody, not just hardcore gamers, but games that anyone can play no matter what your skill level those have absolutely taken over and dominate in every single category. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, so it is interesting to see how, you know, uh, and, and I think that's kind of the focus of what I've, uh, what I'm doing and what Tommy has been so successful at as well is kind of seeing those trends and, 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 you know, making gaming for everybody. I think that's a really good point. And I just want to tack on and say that, I think one of the big difference between kind of the hardcore uh, game market with consoles and PCs is that a lot of times those players invested some serious money mm. in being able to play games, whereas the mobile players and, and the casual PC gamers, they bought their device for something else, for, for using it to, to multiple uh, of different purposes. And then they discovered game alongside of that. And then, in the, the, these growth figures that we're seeing for the future, I definitely see a lot of, you know, multi-purpose devices being used to, to really uh, grow these numbers. And, and eventually, I definitely think everybody is going to be a gamer of some sort. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, um, and so we're going to actually jump into some of the, the items that you guys have been working on in just a moment here. Uh, but to kind of round out the, the numbers and the stats here, you know, some of these I thought were really interesting. You know, obviously, um, with the coronavirus outbreak, you know, game usage has gone up. Uh, 75%, which is um, just amazing that people are kind of staying home, gathering, you know, their families in the home together and finding new ways to game. Really exciting there. Um, that 96% number at the top, you guys, you know, of families. Yes, we love that. I think all of us here today love this, that 96% of families uh, playing games feel closer together. Um, you know, and then, then Tommy Palm, you know, from your perspective, you know, 92 billion, uh, the virtual reality gaming market, you know, by 2027. So amazing there. Um, and then 5.44 billion interactive fitness market growth by 2024. Um, you know, just kind of personally, I'm, I'm working in this space of connecting mobile gaming and fitness. So that number is really exciting to me, uh, playing in that space. And then, um, you know, kind of rounding it out, that $284 billion for AR, you know, the AR gaming market. And I know, uh, Tommy T, you guys have done some uh, experimenting with augmented reality and Amico before launch. So that's yeah. pretty cool. So, yeah, here's, here's kind of a montage of everybody's work uh, at the moment here. Um, you know, Tommy... Tommy Palm, I would love to hear your perspective on uh, kind of at your roots. You know, we, we talked about uh, Candy Crush and, and obviously the huge uh, success with casual mobile gaming and really getting everybody playing. 
um, and kind of your roots. And then now with resolution, you know, having that family friendly play, uh, can you share with us a little bit about, um, about your, your philosophy with family gaming and getting everybody playing and kind of what you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been a very passionate gamer myself for um, more than 30 years now. And uh, I started programming for the Commodore 64 back in, in the mid 80s together with, with some friends. And I always uh, found multiplayer games to be a real shortcut to having way more fun. I, I love single player games as well, but as a programmer, I, I prefer uh, like a quick way of, of, uh, of solving uh, things because uh, multiplayer gaming is also technically more complex. Um, so that's something I've always been very passionate about. I kind of uh, slipped in in my career on, on mobile games and, and I, I started with that back in the late 90s. So kind of way too early before it was really possible to make much money out of that market didn't really happen until Google and uh, well, first most Apple, of course, with, with the App Store. Um, they are what enabled uh, game developers for mobile phones to, to get paid for, for their work. And, and that opened up a fantastic market eventually. Uh, I sold my last company, Fabrication Games, to King and uh, together, the first game we worked on there was Candy Crush Saga that you all know turned out fantastic. And it was a really, really fun project to, to work on and definitely one of those where kind of my dream to open up the target audience for, for who plays games really worked fantastically. Uh, that game has reached hundreds of millions of players by now and, and, and it was really fun to to work on. I worked there for, for three years and, and since then I've been working on, on VR and uh, what looks to be on the middle row here is, is three of the titles that we, uh, we've we been uh, involved in as Resolution Games and, and the middle one is something that's very dear to heart. It's, it's a game called Akron where one of the players is in virtual reality and the other players uh, download a free client to their mobile phone and can join in on the other side. So it's an uh, asymmetrical game where, where you're playing kind of two different games, but in the same world. So the VR player is a tree and have to protect their acorns while the squirrels are trying to steal them. Uh, and we're getting a ton of videos of, of families at home having so much fun with this even people who don't traditionally play games it's very easy to join on the mobile side and then you kind of learn the game and then you want to try it out on the, on the vr side well and tommy you just described uh my kind of uh front room gaming room uh this past weekend that's exactly what my family did um, <laughs> all three Great. of us yeah, we were, you know, uh, we were taking turns on the quest. So we were all taking turns being the tree and kind of, you know, throwing after the, the squirrels and, and being the squirrels and kind of experimenting with the different characters. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It, it has been the first time I can say that I've played um, where as a family, we could kind of have that couch co-op style play uh, with VR. So nice. Yeah, I think That's fantastic. there is a... <laughs> There's a ton of potential there in, in these type of games as, as uh, very powerful devices is becoming more and more common in people's hands. Uh, I think that we're gonna see some fantastic um, development of, of things that you can play uh, between generations. I think that's so encouraging because uh, as, as your numbers said, I definitely think that families that play together feel closer together. Well, I, I agree. And, uh, and Tommy Tallarico, you know, that kind of like feeds nicely into sort of your philosophy with Amico. Um, can you tell us about how you're kind of encouraging everybody from kind of uh, small kids to grandma to game? 
Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting when, when, you know, me and Tommy were growing up, I think we're probably around the same age, um, you know, we didn't have the internet to play video games on, and uh, our AI back then was like our friends, <laughs> you know, we had, we had the greatest AI in the world growing up, actual other people, um, and so, um, you know, when I think of video games growing up, I, you know, there's so many amazing it, it's about the experience. You know, I, I don't remember the games as much as I do the people, you know, and the experience we were have playing. I, I remember the games as well, but the, the things that burn into my mind are playing in television skiing with my mom, playing baseball on in television with my dad, playing uh, biplanes with my brother, Mike, you know, and, and so, and, and having friends come over and, and again, because it was so accessible, it was, and the games were a lot, you know, easier to understand and get into. And you think of the arcade games, you know, uh, Pac-Man, up, down, left, right, you're done. Frogger, up, down, left, right, you're done. What do you have to do? Get to the other side. Gotcha, go. You know, and so that's kind of what we want to, you know, bring back is that, you know, we feel that a lot of the home console games, uh, the home consoles that are out there now, and even, like I said, some of the major PC games um, are very, very complicated. They're amazing. The graphics, I mean, the level of realism, absolutely phenomenal. I love that the industry has, has you know, from when I got in, when we were still working on 8-bit machines and 8-bit sounds and everything, to where it is now, it's un believable that being said it also you know thankfully for mobile try, you know helping to to save this but but it's also alienated a lot of people the the home uh, gaming market and so what is casual on home consoles to a non-gamer isn't casual at all to to them right and so and so that's kind of where we're you know we, were, we really want to kind of explore that you know we saw the nintendo wii as an example that came out 14 years ago was the third biggest selling home console at the time did 102 million units sold and with that you know you like my mom bought a wii right because it was easy she could do this and she could go and she was bowling right that was it no no complicated stuff it was just doing that and and so that's kind of where we look at you know, it's interesting, the older uh, I think people get, and I'll use myself in his example, is that, you know, I sit down and, oh, I have the new whatever game, I don't want to name names, but, but, you know, I'll take it out of the shrink wrap, I'll put it in my system, and now I have to wait for a 20 minute update. Okay, we got to update the firmware, this and that. And now it takes another half hour to put in the to load the discs in on the oh, okay so now it's an hour later i'm starting to play and again a lot of these single player experiences or multiplayer which basically means online somebody in a dark room with their headphones on that's multiplayer these days right um and so you start to play these games and and i feel like i start to feel guilty because you're playing like five, six hours and, you know, the wife's downstairs and she wants to go to lunch and the dog wants to go for a walk and the kids want you to play. And it's like the weekend, the only time, you know, the older we get, the less, you know, time that we have to, you know, spend eight hours on playing a video game, right? You know, like we did in our teens and 20s or when we were kids. And so that's, you know, to me, a lot of these big AAA games, which again, I love, I, I, I hope I'm not feeling like I'm disparaging them in any way, we're, we're not at all, I appreciate them all. But the, you know, what, what the, the, the issue is, is that you feel this guilt, but within television and what we're doing, when you play games together, what I'm doing, what Tommy's doing, is that you're not selling guilt, you're selling time together with family and friends. And that's very important. That's a very different mindset, right? And so that's really our whole idea is that when people are together playing games together, it's a much different experience. And it's not about 
the best graphics and how many teraflops your system has or any of that stuff. It's just, you know, games were created to have fun and bring it back to that basic of having fun together, no matter what your skill level you know, no matter what your skill level, a lot of these games, it takes hours just to get you to a level where you can play with others who, by the way, are going to cream the heck out of you for, for the next three weeks. And it's not fun for you, not fun for them. So, you know, that whole idea of bringing people together, and that's probably, I'd, I'd be curious to know what, what, what Tommy thinks, like one of our challenges is making sure to create a game that's challenging to the hardcore gamer, but that grandma can also play and grandma can win, right? So Grant, we, we don't want the hardcore gamer to have like a big unfair advantage. You know, you take a game like Fortnite, which is amazing, right? But you take a hardcore gamer and grandma and every single time, you know, the non-gaming grandparent is going to get obliterated by the hardcore gamer right so that that's that's like the opposite ends of the spectrum and we're trying to balance that and and again that's kind of we spend a lot of time on that balance i'm, I'm curious tommy do you do you as well yeah i think you're making some some really great points i definitely think that like the industry as you say we tend to make games for people or already converted to, to this uh, and, and, and love games and played other games that work similar ways so we don't have to learn that much in order to get into the game. Whereas, you know, you have a lot of older people who are maybe lonely and, and want to interact with their grandchildren, but it would be impossible for them to take on something like Fortnite or, or the popular games. So I think personally, a lot of it is in the, in the interaction is, is my feeling as a game designer, like how, how easy is it to, to do something that you feel like you're accomplishing uh, something in the game. And, and, and one great way of, of achieving that is to have different roles where, where grandma could be a support, support role and, and carry ammunition or in Fortnite. Uh, maybe that's not the best game example, but, <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we've definitely, as, as a studio, tried to work a lot on, on things that is less violent, for instance. Yeah. Uh, here in, in the, the kind of show reel here, you see Cookout, which is a, a food-making games. You make, uh, you make games for, or sorry, you make uh, sandwiches for, for customers coming along. And it's a very familiar theme. Uh, but again, you know, the, the people on VR right now is... is it's a rather hardcore audience. So there's hours and hours of gameplay there. Whereas with the other game, Blaston, that is a shooter that you can also see on the screen, uh, we spend a lot of time making sure that it's, you know, it takes you seconds to understand what to do. Guns pop up, you grab them, and, and you shoot, and you try to defeat your opponent. Still not a game for grandma, but, but definitely uh, we spent a lot of time working on that it'd be very easy to get into it at the same time as having complexity and something you can spend a long time developing like a skill set that makes you feel uh, that, that you're growing within the game. Well, and blessed on, I am really excited about that because uh, my son and I, we go to laser tag. Well, mm -hmm. prior, prior to COVID-19, we were at laser tag in arcades almost every weekend. And so I am, I am like counting down <laughs> for you guys to get blessed on now. Cause it just, it has that similar, that similar vibe uh, to it. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of anxiously awaiting that one. And, and there's- Definitely. Can I just add something like one of the great things with, with that game is that it's kind of combining a game and a sport so, so similar to like the Wii Tennis, you actually have to move physically. And, and if you're really competing with somebody who is your, like your own skill level, you're gonna need endurance, which I think is a great thing, especially these days now we're, we're home and not moving around as much as we used to. Well, and that's, that's actually a really great point to kind of jump in on, on, on that kind of sort of uh, exergaming, right? Um, or interactive fitness gaming 
you know, we're seeing a lot of it in VR, obviously with the, you know, with Beat Saber, you know, as, as a, a game that people could kind of jump into and sort of get moving around and that type of thing. So I'm excited to hear that you're kind of incorporating a little bit of that physical uh, movement with Blast On. So, so I'm excited about that. Um, I did want to point out actually, you know, in the kind of two of the games that I'm working on at the moment, you know, the, the, the tenants that you guys were talking about, like making it really simple, getting families gathered around. Um, so the one at the bottom there is called Countdown. And uh, we're actually launching on Kickstarter by the end of the month, the first Kickstarter. Um, and what Countdown is, it's think of it as like those sort of handheld games from the 80s. I'm not sure if you guys sort of carry oh, this yeah. in your backpack. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's very much like that handheld game. Uh, but there's going to be 12 games at launch with the ab excuse me ability to you know uh, download more games to the device, and really where we've taken it is high tech hide and seek. So if you want to go, there's a mode where you can go play hide and seek uh, in the back garden and sort of get everybody. If you want to get active, get in the back garden, get moving around. Um, it's not just finding the device, but there's a puzzle you have to solve. Various puzzles when you find it. Uh, but not only that, to kind of the point that Tommy Palm, you mentioned earlier about kind of having other modes for, for the grandparents to play in, uh, we've created sort of a tabletop uh, co-op play. So there's different games where you, the whole idea is like being either around the back garden or around the backyard and having that game, whether it be, you know, from, from toddler to 10 year old to mom to dad to grandma, um, that's super simple that we can get around and play. So. Um, so yeah, would love, would love for you guys to check it out when it's available. And, uh, and then the other point from a, a fitness standpoint, um, another game that we're working on is, uh, Avatar at the bottom there. So very much, uh, you know, inspired by puzzle play, Tommy, um, from Candy Crush like puzzle play, uh, meets fitness tracker. Um, so the whole idea is really encouraging kids and families uh, to have their dashboard, to play the game. And actually, if you don't move around enough, uh, <laughs> you can't get to the next level. So it's all about like, you know, you have to get your steps in, you have to get your running in, and then you can kind of power up your play. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. We've tested it in schools in the UK, um, not in the US yet, but, um, but baby steps. So, you know, we're excited about that, those kind of game plays. Yeah, I, I love that uh, idea. I, I wrote an article for Time Magazine about how I really think that the world needs uh, sports or, or things that helps young people to move more that still has this uh, video games is so, you know, you, you get it instantly, you get a lot of rewards when sports is, is on the opposite side of the spectrum it's really hard in the beginning right you're not good as you start and, and uh, I think that's that's something that uh, a lot of people really appreciate with games like Pokemon Go it actually brings you out and, and, and uh, walking about yeah that was one of the things that was really important to us as well um, you know when when creating the there's one of the controllers here um, but you can see it, uh, you know, lit up. We have all the lights again to, to keep it easy. Grandma hit the R3 button and she's like, what's the R3 button? But, you know, in this instance, grandma hit the blue button or whatever, you know, so you can color code things to make it easy. But, but the uh, motion controls were something that was important as well. So there's a gyroscope and an accelerometer um, in here as well. So, you know, games like horseshoes and shuffleboard and bowling, kind of the recreational sports games, um, you know, you have it where, you know, you put the lanyard on and, and you can, you can use it, you know, use it like this uh, as well. And, and we're also doing that with our edutainment line of games as well. We signed some of the biggest uh, kids licenses in the world. And so, you know, because when you look at edutainment, it's all gone moved over to mobile now well one of the interesting statistics for uh young families one of the things that parents feel the most guilty about is giving their kids too much alone screen time right that's a number one concern that that young parents have and so what we're doing is um bringing edutainment back into the living room 
adding in motion controls when we can and adding in that couch co-op. So mom and dad could play with the young child or the, the younger brother and sister or a group of friends can come over and play together, not you're waiting or it's just one app and, and you're learning your ABCs or whatever. You know, why not get the group you know, a group in person involved and get people, you know, active as well. So again, it's, it's something that you would think would be um, everywhere, but, but in actuality, it, it's not, you know, and, and edutainment is so important to the whole fabric of our culture, right? And so, uh, yeah, we're really 20% of our uh, entire platform is dedicated just to uh, edutainment for kids. But with adults being able to join in as well too, if they want. Well, I, I love that too. You know, I think it's all about fun first. And so if you can get the kids uh, and families really engaged in just fun yeah. uh, and the, the um, you know, education part is, is incorporated in it with sort of characters they know and love, then that's, that's an awesome mix, right? Um, let's see here. So um, I know we're, we're getting close to time. Uh, would love to just kind of have a, a quick chat about where you guys see things going. You know, uh, I know Tommy Palm, you've got a number of games coming out soon. Uh, if you can share with everybody maybe what to expect there um, on what you're working on and then how you, of course, we all want to see what the future holds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so uh, on, on our end, we, we announced a lot of games that is multiplayer right now. And I definitely think there is there is a lot of innovation of, of making multiplayer much more easier to get into. And, and uh, you know, we saw this very cool trend, I think, back in, in the early 2000s with, with uh, massive multiplayer games and persistent worlds. That was like a, a super hardcore um, games genre that kind of have, have stagnated and, and it's not so popular anymore. But I definitely think that that is going to come back, especially with with things like virtual reality, where you can go in and, and experience a, a world um so i'm a, i'm a big believer in in uh in multiplayer and persistent worlds and and uh, that's that's where where i think that there is still a lot of innovation uh happening as as other tommy said uh, the 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 graphics is fantastic but the you know the controls are are basically the same as we had uh, back in in the eighties, with with uh, with rather crude input, you know, and in reality, we we use our voice and and uh, and communicate in a way more advanced way. Great, and I I'm just like encouraging you, please please make more of the games like Akron, where multiple people can play. Um, we love that, and we love that model of just sort of that shared play. So. Um, so I hope to see more of those types of experiences from you guys. Um, and then, <laughs> and then uh, Tommy Tallarico, how about you? How are you? Yeah, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're putting a big bet on people want to play together, family, friends, uh, you know, entertainment, you know, that's, that's where, um, you know, we see this kind of gaping hole in the home console market. Um, and even, you know, within, uh, you know, parts of uh, the majority of, of mobile games as well. So, um, you know, that's our thing is, you know, and, and we also feel kind of a responsibility. Uh, Tommy touched on it a little bit, but, you know, like we don't allow mature rated games or uh, even teen rated games on our system. Um, you know, our four core pillars are simple, affordable, family and entertainment. And those four things spell out the word safe. So, you know, in, in this 
21st century, you know, parents have so many things that they have to kind of monitor with, whether it's their children on the internet or if they give them a mobile device or what they can, can and can't watch on Netflix or, you know, all, even Disney Plus has some, you know, uh, you know more adult uh, content oriented, you know, content on there. And so we wanted to just kind of take that out of, they don't have to worry about it here, right? Um, we didn't need it when we were growing up in the games we played. And so that's, you know, so we're, again, we're, we're, we're taking a, a big bet that people want to play together. Um, now, every one of our games has a single player mode, yes, but uh, every single one of our games also has a co-op or multiplayer or versus mode as well. Every single one of our games. So um, again, yeah, we're offering something that's very unique, very simple uh, control style that com kind of combines the best of mobile, the touch screen, the best of uh, you know, home consoles with buttons and input, and even I'd say the best of VR in regards to being able to, uh, you know, to move it around, but, but keeping it, you know, super simple. So, so I really do hope uh, my vision for the future, where, where I think it is going to go, and and again, I think both me and Tommy are betting big on this, is that more people. Um, you know, if, if the Nintendo Wii proved anything, it proved that people who don't play video games are, you know, are open to playing them if they're presented in a fun, easy way, right? We see it now with mobile and how it's exploded, but can we take that even to the next level? And, and that's really, I think, where the focus is, being able to play everyone being able to play video games no matter what your skill level and to get in and do it to, in, in a simple way. I, I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's where the industry really, really, you can say it's become mainstream already, but I think to take it to an absolute next level, I think that's where it, uh, where it needs to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about all the work that, uh, that you guys are doing and really creating that super simple, uh, safe and fun, fun gameplay uh, across all the, the platforms that you're working on. It uh, seems like gaming is so segmented these days, right? Like, like you know, you, you go into an average household and the, the teenage boy is on maybe the Xbox and the 12 year old kid is on maybe uh, Minecraft or, or getting into Fortnite and, and the mom is playing Candy Crush and, and the dad might be on, you know, PC playing Warcraft. You know, it's, it's become so segmented. And again, can we bring all those people together to enjoy one thing at the same time? And that, that's kind of the focus, you know? Well, and completely agree. And just to kind of build on that point, you know, in our home, we certainly, we, we have an Xbox. Um, we have, you know, we do play our mobile games. We actually play um, voice activated games like uh, Saint Noir from uh, Versix Games. We play that uh, around the table together. Um, another one, actually, I, I had earlier on in the presentation uh, called Hex Tracks. It's not out yet but it's actually these hexagon cards and you create your own sort of racetrack physically with the cards on the table. Uh, and then it's sort of an augmented mobile play, right? So like I can make a track physically on the table together. You can make a, a track, Tommy. Tommy Palm could make a track and we could all sort of challenge each other, you know, together and really have that create mode. And so I'm excited about kind of you know what you're, Tommy Tallarico, what you're doing with Intellivision and kind of mixing the best of mobile play, mixing the best of uh, console play and super safe and affordable. Um, so we can't wait to get one uh, okay. here when it's ready. And um, think about also Val, think, think about like just board games and card games, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a game like Monopoly or Scrabble or Aggravation or Shoots and Ladders or Candyland. These are games that are what, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, right? They didn't need yeah. fancy graphics or fancy boards or, or think of all the card games that mm -hmm. people play from Gin Rummy to, to, to Texas Hold'em Poker, 
black whatever it is right simple games like war or uno all of these amazing things they don't need fancy graphics but it's bringing people together because it's simple and those have been going again 50 60 70 80 years these games are going and they're still fun and people still gather to play them so it's it's pretty pretty amazing yeah, well, thank, thank you both for, for joining me for Comic-Con 2020 at home. Um, please, uh, we, we invite everybody to, to please stay connected, reach out to us, um, and let's all game together. There thank you go. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us.